And in this dream, I was with my mom and we seen that we were in this high rise building um, downtown Seattle, somewhere downtown Seattle. And um, all of a sudden, we see this giant tsunami wave coming to the city. And I tell my mom, 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 look, now my mom doesn't live here. My mom still lives in Georgia. And so, but she was in the dream. <clears throat> and so we see this giant tsunami wave coming. And, and I'm like, mom, 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 look at the wave, look at the wave. And so I'm telling my mom, we need to leave. We need, we need to, we need to get somewhere fast. And we already in an elevated position. And my mom tells me, she says, no, son. God bless you, channel family, and welcome back to Cloud9 Blessings. I hope that you all had a very beautiful and blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. My name is Amber, and I am the creator and narrator of the Cloud9 Blessings YouTube channel. And I thank you for clicking on this video today so that we can experience more powerful submissions that have been emailed into the channel. In this video today, we are going to be looking at a returning visitor, our brother in Christ, Frankie. He wanted to share with us some dreams and visions that he has experienced within the past four months. So he wanted to share that here with the Cloud9 Blessings YouTube channel. At the end of this video, I am going to attach some previous videos that we have had with our brother in Christ, Frankie. So please check those out. But for now, let's now take a look and see what our brother in Christ has experienced. Good morning, fam. How you doing? Um, I just wanted to uh, jump on here really quickly and talk about some encounters that I've had over the last three or four months. Um, initially, I said I wasn't going to say anything. I just wanted to pray over it and pray over it. And then I had an encounter another encounter uh, or just a word spoken to me in um, last month that kind of prompted me to, to say, ooh, maybe I need to re-examine those dreams I had and maybe it's time for me to say something about it. Okay, so I I took some notes here so I didn't didn't forget. Um, the, first, the first encounter I had was um, uh, July, the 17th of July. And in this encounter, um, the, the encounter starts with, um, it's like I was standing in front of the father. I mean, I was, the encounter started with me just being buckled over and it was, the, it was so much glory that I couldn't see it. Um, and I was just getting weaker and weaker and I was just, and I was just bent over with my head covered. Um, with my eyes closed and it still seemed like he was just the the brightness of the glory was was just overwhelming it was just it was uh it was an all-consuming glory it was nothing I could do to get away from it and and I could sense that he wanted to have a conversation with me I could sense that he was telling me okay you can stand up you can stand up and I kept saying I can't I can't it's too much it's too much and and I was just getting weaker and weaker and weaker as if I was going to um pass out. And I said, I can't stand. I said, I can't look. I can't look upon you. And it was just so much glory. There. And I, I'm like I said, I was just getting weaker and weaker and just getting limp and limp and limp. And so um then it seemed like he started to move away like he understood that it was too much and, and then he started to move away. And so I could sense that the intensity of the glory was now, you know, moving away from me. And so when I thought it was safe to look up, I decided, okay, now I, I, I can feel my, my, my strength regaining too. And so once I decided it was safe to look up, I did so. And once I looked up, the father wasn't there. The father had moved away. And once I looked up, um, I was staring at the sun. Can you, I've been to the Grand Canyon before, so can you imagine it for those of you who have been like standing on the, the cliff, the edge of the Grand Canyon and having a huge sun just right in front of you. Now, he did something to my body so I couldn't feel the heat and he did something to my eyes so that I could look upon the sun. I couldn't look upon him, but I could look upon the sun and it, the sun seemed it was like a huge planet just right in front of me. And I knew it was the sun. Um... It may have been like 10 miles away from me, 
But you can imagine the sun, the sun, the sun. And so all of a sudden as I'm standing there, I'm thinking, where did the father go? Where did the father go? And I'm looking around. I don't see him, but I'm looking at the sun. And I'm just like, wow. Like, why did he put me here? Now, all of a sudden, as I'm thinking those thoughts, it was, it was as if a hand came out of nowhere and reached up and pulled the blind down in front of the sun. It was a black blind. I know it sounds crazy. This is what happened. Pulled the blind down in front of the sun. And once that blind came down in front of the sun, it was total pitch black darkness. And I couldn't see anything. And I was afraid to move. It was so pitch black dark that I was afraid to move. And I said, I can't move. I can't see anything. I can't see anything. Because I was sensing that the father was still there. But I just couldn't see him. And I said, I can't see anything. I can't see anything. Because I was afraid to move. And then all of a sudden, that same hand came back over and reached to the bottom of the mini blind and just and let the blind back up. And once the blind uh, went back up, the sun was no longer there. Now it was the moon. I'm staring at the moon. And the moon is not as, as enormous as the sun would be. But here's the thing. Now that I'm standing and I'm standing in the same position, now that now the sun has been replaced by the moon, and the moon was covered in blood. I mean, big drops of blood. And I'm standing there, it's like a horror flick. And I'm standing there and I'm watching all this blood drip off the moon. And I'm like, oh my God. And it's not like one of those um, John Hagee moons, you know, with a moon with a little discoloration. It was a real blood moon, not blood red moon. It was a blood moon with just real life blood just dropping off the moon. And then I woke up. You know, that's why I hadn't said anything about this because I wasn't really sure what it meant. And I've been praying to God, um, like, what does this mean? Uh, did you want me to say anything about this? Um, but you can see, uh, I think in Joel, um, in Matthew 24, and then again in, um, I think it's Revelation 6, where the sun refuses to shine and the blood, uh, the moon turns blood red. So, I mean, I, I'm really not in a position to say that I know what it means, other than the fact that all these preceded the coming of the Lord. All these events preceded the coming of the Lord. So maybe the coming of the Lord is much more sooner than we thought, than we originally thought, or even imagined, for him to show me that. Um, but I'm not here. I'm not here to say specifically that I know exactly what this means, because I've had dreams and visions like this before, and sometimes it's come to pass. But it come to pass in a way that I never imagined it would come to pass. It came to pass in a way that was not even on my trajectory. Trajectory. So I don't even want to say um, this because God didn't say anything. He never said anything. He just showed it to me. Um, so I'm not gonna try to see him give a hypothesis. So, um, and then on August 8th, uh, I had another dream on August 8th. And in this dream, I was with my mom and we seemed like we were in this high, high rise building, um, downtown Seattle, somewhere downtown Seattle. And, um, all of a sudden we see this giant tsunami wave coming to the city. And I tell my mom, 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 look, now my mom doesn't live here. My mom still lives in Georgia. And so, but she was in the dream. <clears throat> and so we see this giant tsunami wave coming. And, and I'm like, mom, 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 look at the wave, look at the wave. And so I'm telling my mom, we need to leave. We need, we need to, we need to get somewhere fast. And we are already in an elevated position. And my mom tells me, she says, no, son. She says, we're fine. And I'm like, and I'm getting hysterical. Like, no, 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 we need to leave. We need to go, we go. Look at the wave. And the wave hadn't hit yet, but we could see it from afar. And it was tall as the buildings coming in. And my mom kept telling me, no, son, we're fine. We're fine. We're okay. And it was, so eventually the wave came in and all of downtown Seattle was covered in water. All of downtown Seattle was covered in water. If you were in one of the high rise buildings in downtown Seattle, the water came up to maybe like the seventh or the eighth floor of all the high rise buildings downtown. 
Yeah. The waterfront, everything was covered. And everybody who was down in those lower areas, everybody who was down there who didn't see the wave coming, yeah, that part. So, um, and so I woke up out of that dream. I woke up and, um, but here's the part that was interesting to me. My mom said we were okay. It was almost like there was some supernatural protection, you know, like Goshen and Exodus, which, you know, yeah, and Exodus, how God protected his own people. And it's almost like there was some, the, 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 the wave, the tsunami wave was coming, but it's almost as if we were protected. And so I got up. Of course, I got up and I started walking around my room in the middle of the night. And I'm like, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? And I wake up and I'm kind of hysterical at first, you know, because you're still feeling the energy uh, of that dream. Because it's just, my dreams are, they're so real to me. It's, it's almost like it's a dual reality. And sometimes when I come out of it, I really don't know which reality I'm still in. If I'm in the dream reality or the vision or if I'm back at home, I'm, sometimes I... It's hard to, to to distinguish where I am. So I got up and I prayed a little bit, just kind of, you know, you know, walking, praying, walking through the house, praying, trying to wake my wife up. And so I, I went back to bed. As soon as I went back to bed, this is the same night now. Mind you, it's the same night. As soon as I went back to bed, I went right back into another dream. And this dream, I was with my wife. And we were riding down um, Pack Highway or by SeaTac over by the airport. Anybody who's... um. From Seattle, they'll, they'll know that area is is a, it's a popular area by the airport. And so all of a sudden, my wife says, "Honey, look, look, honey, look, look, look!" And the top of the mountain just blew off. Mount Rainier, just this, this, this right down the street from my house. Well, not really right down the street, but we could see the mountain from our home. Um, the the, the top, the entire top of the mountain, just freaking blew off. And my wife was like, "Honey, honey, turn around, turn around, turn around!" And I looked, and I could just see. All the, the, the smoke and the ash, the rocks just coming from that mountain. It sounded like it was like an engine, like a thousand, um, um, freight trains, like, and the smoke would just come out, and ash and rocks flying everywhere. And we were able to turn the car around and boogie, 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 and get out just in time. And I woke up from that. Now, this dream was much like the last dream. We were able to turn. And, and get out of harm's way. Again, it's almost like Goshen. Like, <clears throat> okay, so what do these dreams mean? I think both dreams, the dreams about the, the sun going dark and the moon turning to blood, um, do I think that's gonna actually happen? No, I think that's largely symbolism. I really do. I think it's largely symbolism. And this dream about the tsunami um, coming to Seattle, burying the city, um, and, and about the uh, the top of the mountain being blown off. Mm -hmm. Can that happen? Well, they keep saying that we and this Andrea's fault out here. Um, could happen, but I think that's, I think it's largely symbolism too. If I could just speak my truth, I think it's largely symbolism. Um, I think whatever will happen or could happen will come in waves, just like um, a tsunami would. Or it might be just be a, a major eruption in the city or a major eruption in our nation. Just like the, the top of the mountain blown off. It could be a major eruption in our economy or a major eruption in our healthcare system. Um, or it could be war. It could be a terrorist attack. If a terrorist attack happens, then that's like a tsunami wave. Or if a terrorist attack happened, that's like a major eruption in the city or in the nation. So that's why I think it is largely symbolism. But either way, it'll leave a lot of um, devastation and it'll catch a lot of people off guard with, 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 either, with either scenario. I, but I really don't think that a tsunami wave is going to come into the city and bury the city all the way up to the eighth floor of the high rise buildings or that the, the top of the mountain is going to completely blow. Oh, God forbid, because I live too close to that freaking mountain. But I think it's largely simple. It's just like what I said. Um, and on October the 2nd, and this is what kind of alarmed me. On October 2nd, um, I woke up in the middle of the night. Well, I guess it wasn't with me. I think it was around about, more about 5 o'clock in the morning. 
And, and I was just shaking, 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 shaking. I felt like I was shaking. I felt like I was, it felt like a violent and aggressive shake. I mean, just shaking, shaking. That's how it felt to me. And it was so bad, I jumped out of the bed. I jumped out of the bed and I was telling my wife, it's earthquake, it's earthquake, it's earthquake, it's earthquake. You know, my poor wife, you know, she, she's accustomed to this by now because she's been married to me for almost 17 years and it's happened all the entire time we've been married. And so, she was just like, honey, honey, what's going on? And I said, don't you feel the shaking? Don't you feel the shaking? It's the earthquake. It's the earthquake. And she's like, no, honey, there's there's no earthquake. No, there's no earthquake. There's nothing shaking. The house is not shaking. And even though I was out of the bed and, and in the room, I could still feel the shaking. So I, I, I walked out of my, my bedroom. I walked into the master bedroom. I walked into the master bedroom. of um, I walked into the bathroom of the master bedroom. I turned the light on and everything was still in place. So I'm looking around the bathroom. I mean, I'm really, I'm really trying to come down because I was so emotional and I can still feel the shaking. I'm in, I'm inside my master bedroom and I'm, I'm looking around. Everything's still in place and I'm looking at my arms and I'm like, I'm, I can see that my arms are not shaking, but I still can feel the shaking. I mean, on the inside, I was still shaking just as violently. And so I leave, um, from out of the master bedroom and I come down here, I come downstairs and, in the, in the dining area, in the living room, I started walking around the, our home. And I, and I thought to myself, well, the alarm didn't go off. I mean, we have a home alarm, so that kind of shaking. You know, you can imagine the, the home alarm. Wee, 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 wee. Nothing. And so I go back upstairs. And my wife was like, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, you probably just in one of your visions. And so I said, yes. And so she was like, tell me about it. And I was just telling her. It was just shaking. The entire... The entire vision was just shaking. It was just shaking. What does that mean? Well, I think that one's more simple. Um, I think it means that a great shaking is coming. When is it coming? I think it's already started. Israel. I think the shaking has already started. All uh, those nations uh, talking about converging on Israel. I think the shaking has already started. Uh, we don't know what the fallout is going to be, whether, you know, where's all the different places that it's going to spread to, like America. You know, I've always wondered where would America be in the end times? I've always wondered that. And I, and I always thought to myself that America will be, America's not even in the Bible. We're not going to be nowhere in the end times. Wrong. I was wrong on that because now America, not now, but America is allied to Israel. And America's right in the thick of it. Right in the thick of it. Okay, so I just think that means that a great shaking is coming. And if, if you could have felt the shaking that was going on inside of my body. I mean, my core is almost like I, is it, is if I could feel my liver, my kidneys, my heart vibrating like the core, like the core, this part. All my organs, I could feel like shaking and trembling inside my body. And even though I was out of the encounter and standing up beside my bed, the core, the foundation, the foundation for America, the things that we take for granted, the health care, the jobs, the, the military, the, the education, all the things that we take, the food sources, the water supply, all the things that we take for granted, the very foundation of the American society could be shaken because America has kind of decided that that she no longer needs God, no longer wants God around, but there is a remnant. That's why God told me to name this channel, Remnant of Rising, because there is a remnant. There's a remnant here in America. And we're still crying out to God. Okay, so here is the last one. Um, on the 16th of October, I was lying in my bed. I was lying in my bed, and it's, it's probably about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And this is what I heard. We are living in the last days. And you need to keep your eyes and ears open at all times. And I just sat straight up in my bed. I'm like, well, now that's not, that's not the first time that God has told me that um, we're living in the last days. This may be like the second or third time. That he's told me that we're living in the last days. But this time he said, I need to keep my eyes and ears open. Like I need to be on guard. Like I need to be on alert. Uh, I moved to 
Seattle, Washington in 2010 from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I can't ever remember him telling me that we were living in the last days when I lived in Atlanta. And I was a Christian in Atlanta as well. Um, I think the first time he ever said that we were living in the last days, I think it was around 2012. And and I've had I had a couple of dreams in between that time. I had a, I've had a couple of dreams where I was I saw, I saw myself with, a, with a, a gang of other people and we were all running. We didn't know why we were running. We were running, and they would round us up and they would put us in these these fences. Um, it was like an outdoor prison with just a huge fence, and we were all fenced in. And and we knew I understood in the dream that we were there because we didn't take the market of bees. Um, um, I'm not saying that the people would be here. I think he just allowed me to go through a couple of these, uh, I have a couple of these visions. So I know what it feels like for the people who get left behind. Um, but, and, and both dreams were kind of the same where we were loaded up at gunpoint and we were taken to these outdoor camps and, and then it was thousands of people. And then they'll call you in one by one. And we, and in both accounts, we noticed that, or I noticed that when, when they would take the people in, they never came back. So we could never question them, like, what happened? What they say? What's going on? What's going on inside the facility? No, and they never said that. They never came back. So we were just all left too soon. And we were all inside the prison encampment and we've already deciding we're not taking it. We just got to stay in. I've had two dreams like that since I've been in Seattle. And he also told me back in 2012 that we were living in the last days. And then, then October 16th, he just said it again. And this time he said, keep your eyes and your ears open. Which means that you need to be on alert. Which means that you need to be attentive. Um, that you need to be in your word. You need to be prayerful. Um, now it's not a time to chase worldly passions or now it's not a time to be, uh, uh, a lukewarm Christian, uh, now's not a time for that. Now's the time to just be sober minded and being able to discern the time. I mean, you, if, you, if you look you, in 2012, when God told me that we were living in the last days, I'm thinking, are you kidding me? It's 2012. And I'm, I'm thinking last days, like the disciples, when they was running from the last, let's say like when they were running from Paul, or uh, John the Revelator, he was on the Isle of Patmos and the church was being persecuted. Or when Titus marched into Rome and, and, and they were just putting the, the Israelites to the sword and the Christians were having to live in caves. And I'm thinking, now he tells me this in 2012, they were living in the last days. And I'm trying to make this analogy. Like, this looks like an ordinary day. Mm -hmm. That's a rabbit hole though. It looks like a nerve day. And when he said it to me on the 16th, I woke up and I'm looking around. I told to my wife, I said, God just told me again that we're living in the last days. It looks like an ordinary day out here in Seattle. And I guess it looks like it every other place except Ukraine and maybe Sudan and Israel where there's wars. It's not ordinary days for them, but for us, it just seems like an ordinary day. But the season has changed. Mm-hmm. If God said that we live in the last days, and he was very emphatic about it, that we are living in the last days, and you need to keep your eyes and your ears open at all times, the season has already changed. Whether you can see it or not, whether you believe it or not, the season has already changed. We're in the last days. So, um, be watchful and be prayerful. Some of these things you're not going to be able to see with the naked eye. You're not going to be able to see it. You're going to have to pick this up in the spirit. Like the sons of Issachar, and I think it was the first chapter, uh, in the first chronicles, they, they had the ability to discern the times, and you have to be able to discern the times. Me, I'm just looking around like, whoa, last days? Are you kidding me? Last days? Man, these some good last days. <laughs> if, if, if I use the analogy of, of, of what the, the early church was going through, these last days here are great. No, things are about to turn up. The tsunami dream, you know, the um, sun going dark, blood red moon, big drops of blood, top blowing off the mountain, and I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm shaking, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Things are about to turn up. People, you need to listen to me. 
You need to wake up, church. You need to wake up, wake up, wake up. Things are about to turn up. The season has changed. And I just pray, as I end this video, I just pray that God will give you eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive his word. I mean, I guess the only reason I know is because he keeps dealing with me about it. And, and then it becomes my job to sound the alarm. I'm not, I'm not going to get into why, but he told me, you're my watchman at the gate. He told me a lot of other things too, but I'm not going to see him in this video, but he said, you are a watchman at the gate. A watchman at the gate has to watch out for the people inside the gate, the body of Christ. I have to sound the alarm. When he says it to me, I have to sound the alarm. People, things are about to turn up. And I have to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive his word, and the ability to discern the times. God bless you. That's it for me. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother, for sharing these experiences with me. Wow. I felt the intensity the whole time that you were speaking of all the things that you have seen within this past four months. They are so intense. And I do believe that you have been chosen to receive these important messages to share of many things that are to come. I have had a dream myself where I have seen the blood moon. And at that time, I had no idea what it had truly meant. But when I read the Bible and started really digging in and looking at all the things that are to come about the sun being turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord come, it all made a lot of sense to me because there are a lot of warning signs that will come to pass before the Lord's return. And we are starting to see them. And, you know, a lot of people just don't seem to see a lot of these things. But that's where I believe discernment comes and reading the word of God and delving into the scriptures because the Bible is our guide. The Lord gave that to us so that we would have the proper knowledge of what is to come so that we would be prepared for what lies ahead in many of the months and years. And that is happening right now. And from also the other experiences that you had where you saw that you know water coming at you you were with your mother um that was very terrifying but i do believe that that will be something that will take place along with as you were saying the blood moon and then you also felt that shaking i have felt that too and i never truly understood what that meant i had woken up in the middle of the night quite a few times and I was shaking and I'm wondering, what is that? And then I wake up and I'm looking around me in my bedroom and everything is still and is quiet, but I felt as if I was being shaken in my sleep. And I appreciate you sharing that here in this video because that was a confirmation for me as well from a previous experience that I had. And it felt real because I had dreamt before but I had felt like a shaking and I never quite knew what that was. Could that have possibly been what you had seen? Quite possibly. But I do believe, as you were saying, that there is a shaking that is coming and it, most of it has already begun to pass. Now that we're seeing of what has happened in October with Israel, we're seeing the famines, the plagues, the pestilences, the weather changes. There's so much that is happening and the Lord is trying so hard to wake up the people to see that we are in the end times and your dreams and your experiences have been a confirmation. Our Brother in Christ YouTube channel information is in the description box, so please head over there. He is so encouraging, such a great brother in Christ. I am going to be attaching at the end of this video two of his previous experiences that have been featured on the channel because they are also so powerful. His testimony, and then he's also shared an experience about take being taken to hell that was also very intense and i truly pray that his experiences along with a lot of the videos here on the channel dreams and visions will wake up many who are slumbering right now to wake up and to see that we are in the season 
of the Lord's return. I thank you so much for clicking on this video today. Please comment in the comments section down below and let me know, have you had an experience like this before? Have you seen a blood moon in an experience? Have you seen a tsunami wave? If so, I would love to hear from you because this would also be a great confirmation for many who are seeing these types of dreams. I thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video today, brothers and sisters. May God bless you all and have a very blessed week.